Thank you, Lone Ranger. Welcome to the George Thomas Clark Podcast. Today we're going to talk about writing, and when you talk about writing, you're automatically talking about rewriting and editing. And uh, that can be an amazingly satisfying process, but before it is that, it is generally quite difficult. The more ambitious and the longer your product project generally, the more editing and rewriting you're going to have to do. Uh, many years ago, 40 years ago, I wrote a short story called Janet. It was one of the two or three first short stories that I wrote. And it was about 20 pages double-spaced at the time. And um, I, I would go over it periodically and, 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 and see that it was rather sloppily written. And, but I just kept at it year after year, and then I would set aside for weeks or months and then go back to it. And then uh, perhaps 10 years after that, meaning roughly 30 years ago, uh, or 25, I, I got to the point where it was 12 pages. And there it stood for quite some time, and I thought, man, this this thing is really good. It's really good. And then uh, another 10 years after that, about 15 years ago, I, I had enough stories to to publish a collection. And um, I thought, this is a tight, oft-polished 12-page story. So it's got to be good. And so I had Janet is the name of the story. And then I had other stories uh, typeset as well. And then as I was reading the galleys, uh, I, I would just get this feeling that something isn't right. And, and for a writer, that's a tough thing to do, to say, I've worked so hard on this, other people have taken a look at it, and so forth. And I, it, it, it just isn't right. I can feel it isn't right, it doesn't sound right, and above all, it just doesn't feel right. So um, I started uh, telling people, all right, we're going to have to hold off a little bit here, um, and I'm going to have to do some more revising on this this Janet. So as it turned out, now cuts can be anywhere. They can be at the start. They can be at the middle. They can be at the end. Uh, anywhere you have excess is where you need to cut. And as it worked out with the story, much to my surprise and chagrin, uh, although now it's perhaps humorous, uh, it, it was at the start that I had the problem. And I would cut generally one paragraph most of the time, never more than two. And I did this and did this and did this. And this is all when the book is in galleys. And um, it, it, it was frustrating, but I, I was so confident each time I would cut a paragraph or so, I would think, okay, now I finally got it. Well, this process continued and continued until I cut that 12-page story down to one page. So uh, from my collection of short stories, The Bold Investor, I would like to read you the very short story called Janet. Janet retreated two steps before Jim charged and smashed her back against the wall, driving her onto the floor. His first punch was deflected by Janet's left hand and only bruised the side of her hand. She jerked and kicked, and Jim kept yelling things while he flailed. Twice Janet escaped and ran to other rooms, and each time Jim caught her and was mean. He might have continued if the only house in sight hadn't just been moved into and was light inside. Jim went outside to check. He then saw her on the phone through the big bedroom window and ran back in. Who are you calling? What's wrong with you? You called the damn police, Jim, for God's sake. He stayed there and was berating her as police ran in and flung him against the wall, uh, flung him against the cabinet while putting on handcuffs. There were several delays in the trial, and twice Jim drove to Janet's house. The first time he got there was around sunset, and Janet saw him creep into the driveway and hustled out front and yelled the police would soon be there. He left. Janet did not see Jim come the second time. She was on her back, 
thinking about Jim and listening to crickets in the brush outside. And crickets combine with him to form a grinding sound and sensation pervading her life. She could not sleep or relax and felt another long night coming. And her heart punctured when he hit the big window and yelled, You're going to pay. Janet ran away screaming so hard, even then she felt her vocal cords burn. She dashed down the hall and into the kitchen, then over to the living room and back to the kitchen, then to the bedroom, screaming for help. She was afraid to stand long enough to use the phone, so she kept running around, thinking anywhere she went was bound to be wrong. Oh God, she thought. She heard him climb into the bedroom. No, he's just kicked in the back door. He's going to kill me. He's going to kill me right here. Because she had been so loud, Janet did not hear Jim's car start and move away. Next afternoon, the judge issued a restraining order. Then Jim called several times at night and was very unreasonable. A restraining order was issued for the phone, too. After the trial, as Jim was escorted out for 90 days in county jail, he yanked free of the bailiff's gift Get a grip and swirled around and stared at Janet and said, Don't forget. Janet's insomnia became worse and so did Bourbon. Work wasn't much fun either. Janet only began to feel better when she bought a nice new gun.